Start by opening the top flap of the box. You should quickly be able to locate the software and setup disk tucked inside the flaps. Links to all of our guides and documentation are available from that disk. On the back of the CD jacket you'll find your activation serial number, which you will need during installation. Let's start by taking a quick inventory. In your accessories box, you'll find the cutter's power cable, your blades, serial cable, your USB cable, your pen holder with the pen insert, and your blade holder. You should also find an extra fuse. Now let's take the cutter out of the box and set it aside. It may appear as though the box is now empty, but if your cutter came with the stand, there's still a second layer which needs to be removed. Pull the false bottom out to reveal the cutter's stand components. The stand components should consist of two material roller bars, two cross beams, two stand legs, a media catch basket, two long catch basket brackets, two stand feet, and two short material roller bar brackets, a bag of nuts and bolts, an Allen wrench, and a regular wrench will be located in a smaller box. Let's take some nuts and bolts out and get started building the stand. Unwrap the stand legs and feet. The top of the stand leg will have three holes near the end, which help indicate which will be the front of the cutter, and also has a larger platform surface. The foot will have two holes which are slightly offset. We found it easiest to use one stand leg to help build the other. We also used this smaller box for added support. Here you can see the completed stand leg, with three holes indicating which direction is the front. As you can see, the feet have the longer part facing the rear of the cutter. Now let's get our brackets ready. We're going to set the legs down parallel to each other, with the front side facing up. Let's start by connecting the crossbeams. Align the holes in the crossbeam with the holes near the bottom of the stand leg. Then attach the bolts and screws so that they're finger tight. Although we're just hand tightening the bolts now, when we're finished you'll want to go back and really tighten everything properly using the Allen wrench and standard wrench. Next we're going to do the same for the upper crossbeam, but we're not going to set the nuts on the bolts just yet because we also have to attach the material roller bar brackets as well as the media catch basket brackets. You can set just the bolts in place to hold up the crossbeam on one side while you work on the other. Once you have the roller bar brackets in place, you can finger tighten the lower screw with a nut. Then attach the long media catch basket bracket so that the longer section is facing the rear of the cutter. Be careful not to install the short roller bar brackets upside down like I did the first time, or you'll be starting this part all over again. Now let's do the other side. 
we're going to just set the top bolt and attach the nut on the lower bolt. Then remove the top bolt and affix the long media catch basket bracket. Once you've got everything put together, you can place the roller bars in the brackets, then set the catch basket in its place. As far as the stand is concerned, we're done. Let's set the stand out of the way for a moment and unwrap our cutter. Carefully remove the foam end caps, the plastic shroud, and any zip ties. You'll need to remove the four nuts from the bottom of the cutter before you can place it on the stand. Once the threaded cutter feet are in the stand holes, you can screw the nuts back into place, thereby securing it properly to the stand. On the back of the cutter, you'll find a bonding wire, which attaches to a bolt on the stand leg. This wire is designed to help reduce static electrical interference during longer cuts. The pinch rollers are difficult to move by design and will likely require that you use both hands and some force when placing them above the feed rollers. They are activated and deactivated in unison by using the pinch roller lever in the rear of the machine. When you first power the cutter on, you should see the name of the cutter displayed on the LCD panel. You set the speed and force simply by pressing the corresponding arrows. To set the home origin or the starting point for your cutter, press the offline button, then press the arrows. Left and right will move the carriage up and down, we'll move the feed rollers in and out. When the carriage is located where you want it to start, press the enter button. Pressing the reset button simply brings the cutter back to its home origin. Next, let's get our blade holder set up properly. If your cutter came with a three pack of blades, open the blade pack and remove a blade from the foam backing material. Then remove the red rubber protective cap. The red caps indicate a 45 degree blade, while the blue caps indicate a 60 degree blade. Be careful when handling the blade, as the cutting end is very sharp. Insert the cone-shaped end of the blade into the blade holder. The silver plunger on the end of the blade holder is meant only for removing the blade, so you don't have to constantly readjust its depth. Now let's test the depth of the blade. Our goal is only to cut the vinyl material without cutting into the backing and here it looks like we have too much blade exposed. Reduce the amount of blade showing by a quarter or a half turn, then tighten the set screw up again. This test looks good, but as we'll see, the blade is still cutting too deep into the backing. That can dull our blade, making weeding difficult. Conversely, if the blade is set too shallow, the vinyl will be difficult to weed and cause the material to tear. With just a bit of trial and error, you'll have the blade set to just the right depth. 
In this next method, like before, take the blade holder with the blade inserted, and keeping the blade holder straight up and down, cut a circle. Don't be afraid to use a bit of force. The goal for this test is to set the depth of the blade so you can cleanly cut a circle from a single sheet of paper while barely leaving a scratch on the piece of paper directly underneath it. If you cut through any more than a single sheet of paper, then you have too much blade exposed, and you'll need to recalibrate the depth of the blade. Our last step is loading your material. Place some vinyl on the material roller bars, then load it into the back of the cutter. To ensure you're loading the material squarely, use the ruler lines in the front and the back of the machine. Line up the edge of the material with the corresponding mark, first in the front, then in the back. Once you have them both lined up, you can lower the pinch rollers. For more detailed instructions and tutorials, please visit uscuttersupport.com.